Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It's lovely being back uh, here in Birmingham. Uh, or should I say Birmingham? Uh, alhamdulillah, it's lovely to be back and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it of benefit. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it a means of our entry into Jannah. Ameen. Inshallah, I'll begin with a short recitation after which we will commence the talk uh, بإذنillahi ta'ala أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وسيق الذين كفروا إلى جهنم زمرا حتى إذا جاءوها فتحت أبوابها وقال لهم خزنتها وقال لهم خزنتها ألم يأتكم رسل منكم يتلون عليكم آيات ربكم يتلون عليكم آيات ربكم وينذرونكم لقاء يومكم هذا قالوا بلى ولكن حقت كلمة العذاب على الكافرين قيل ادخلوا أبواب جهنم خالدين فيها فبئس مثوى المتكبرين وسيق الذين اتقوا ربهم إلى الجنة زمرا حتى إذا جاءوها وفتحت أبوابها وقال لهم خزنتها سلام وقال لهم خزنتها سلام عليكم طبتم فادخلوها خالدين وقالوا الحمد لله الذي صدقنا وعده وأورثنا الأرض وأورثنا الأرض نتبوأ من الجنة حيث نشاء فنعم أجر العاملين وترى الملائكة حافين من حول العرش يسبحون بحمد ربهم يسبحون بحمد ربهم وقضي بينهم بالحق وقيل الحمد لله رب العالمين <تصفيق> بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين إله العالمين وبه نستعين ونصلي ونسلم على خاتم الأنبياء وإمام المرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم لا سهل إلا ما جعلته سهلا وأنت تجعل الحزن إذا شئت سهلا رب يسر ولا تعسر وتم بالخير وبك نستعين We thank Allah رب العزة والجلال for having gathered us here today and we ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى to surround us with the ملائكة and to cause his mercy and his سكينة to descend upon us and to raise us with the Anbiya alayhimu salatu was salam and those whom he has mentioned with them. Ameen. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is laying calmly in his bedding, comfortable in Mecca. When some angels come and they wake him up, place him on an animal that is more than a donkey and less than a mule. And they take him to Baytul Maqdis in Jerusalem. Here, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam leads the Anbiya Alayhimu Salatu Wasallam in prayer. And then Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala raises the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to the first heaven. Where he meets Adam Alayhi Salatu Wasallam. Marhaban bin Nabi Salihi wal Ibn Salih. Welcome to the righteous Nabi and the righteous son. And here he is then taken up to Isa alayhi salatu was salam, the second heaven, Isa alayhi salatu was salam. Marhaban bin Nabi salihi wal akhi salih. Welcome to the righteous Nabi 
and the righteous brother. He is then taken up to the third heaven where he meets Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam. Marhaban bin Nabi salihi wal akhi salih. Welcome to the righteous Nabi and the righteous brother. He goes up to the fourth heaven, meets Idris alayhi salatu was salam. Marhaban bin Nabi salihi wal akhi salih. The fifth heaven, he meets Harun alayhi salatu was salam. Marhaban bin Nabi salihi. Well, Akhi Salih goes up to the sixth heaven, meets Musa alayhi salatu was salam, marhaban bin Nabi salihi, well, Akhi Salih. And then he goes up to Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam on the seventh heaven, marhaban bin Nabi salihi, well, Ibn Salih. Welcome to the righteous Nabi and the righteous son. Yeah. It is said that he saw Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam and Ibrahim looked most like Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Imagine being woken up in your bedding. You're comfortable, you're happy, you're okay, you're sleeping at peace. And you're woken up by angels and all of a sudden you're at the seventh heaven. At this juncture when he meets Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam, it's a point of comfort for him because he sees someone who looks like him. And then he is taken up further beyond the seventh heaven where he hears Sarir al Aqlami, the writing of the pens on the scrolls. You know how every time you do something or when you are going to do something, something that's written for your future. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala writes it down. Whatever you do is written down by the angels. He hears the writing of the pens on the scrolls. And then he goes up even further and he meets Allah Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal. It is said that here in this juncture, at this point where there is illumination, there is peace, comfort, awe, majesty. Imagine standing before Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal, your maker, the one who fashioned you. Here Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is given the gift of as salah The gift that we continue to perform until today. If we pause here for a moment and look at the rest of the commandments that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down, then we realize that he actually sent them down from the heavens to the earth. But when it came to as salah he raised Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, elevated him up to him and then gave him this gift of as salah Yet we find ourselves in a position where we sometimes don't even pray or we compromise our prayer for our businesses and for our family and for tasks that we are doing or perhaps we sometimes just do it purely out of laziness. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was raised above the seven heavens to be given this gift of as salah And it is prescribed to him as 50 units of prayer in the day or 50 prayers in the day and the night. So not units, but 50 prayers in the day and the night. One day, one night, 50 prayers. He then comes down to Musa alayhi salatu was salam. And Musa asks him, what happened up there? I'd like to know what went down. Tell me what's going on. What did you come back with? And he says, I've been prescribed 50 prayers in the day and the night. Musa alayhi salatu was salam says to him, inna qaw, inna la thalik. Your people will not be able to do that. Inni jarrabtu bani Israel. I tried with Banu Israel and they were not able to do so. So go back, farji' ila rabbika fas'alhu takhfif. Go back to your Lord and ask him for less. So Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam goes back up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he asks him for less. And then he comes down with 10 less to Musa alayhi salatu was salam. And he says, what happened? He says, I've now got 40. So he says, Farji ila rabbika fas'alhu takhfif. Go back to your Lord and ask him for less. Your people won't manage 40. 
So he goes back and in this fashion, back and forth, up and down, up and down, until he comes back with only five prayers in the day and the night. And Musa alayhi salatu wasalam tells him, Inna qawmaka la yutiqoon. Your people will not be able to do this. Go back and ask your Lord for less. And he says, I can't. I can't. How can I go back? He started at 50. We're at five right now. How can I go back and ask him for less? Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam comes back to the earth. He comes back to the earth with this gift of a salah. I'd like to draw our attention to something. In the same manner that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went up to receive the prayer, you can actually perform your own mi'raj to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala five times a day. All you have to do, Allahu Akbar, Allah is the greatest. And if you see him in front of you, that is your own form of mi'raj. Yes, it will not be. In the physical manner that it happened with the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for indeed Khayru Khalqillah He was the best of creation of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala But you can imagine Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala before you U'budu Allah ka'annaka tarah Worship Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala As though you see Him As though He is before you He is in front of you You are interacting with Him فَإِن لَمْ تَكُنْ تَرَاهُ فَإِنَّهُ يَرَاكُ For if you do not see him and you, if you are not able to do so, then he is able to see you. At least know that much that my maker is watching me. His eyes on me. He knows what I'm doing. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, قَسَمْتُ الصَّلَاةَ بَيْنِي وَبَيْنَ عَبْدِي نِصْفَيْنِ وَلِعَبْدِي مَا سَأَلْ I have... Divided salah into two parts between me and my servant, and for my servant will be that which he asks. فَإِذَا قَالَ الْعَبْدُ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ قَالَ اللَّهُ مَدْ حَمِدَنِي عَبْدِي When my servant says, Praise be to Allah, Lord of the worlds. Allah says, My servant has praised me. Imagine in this hadith Qudsi where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is relating and narrating to us that which Allah has said. Allah says that he responds to your remembrance of him. Me, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is responding to me, the weak servant who can't let go of the sins that are I'm committing, yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala converses with me, Allahu Akbar. How can we then say, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen and rush through our salah? How? How? When you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is responding to you. فَإِذَا قَالَ الْعَبْدُ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ When the servant says, الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ the All-Merciful, the Especially Merciful, Allah responds, Athna alayya abdi. My servant has praised me in excess. فَإِذَا قَالَ الْعَبْدُ مَالِكِ يَوْمِ الدِّينَ So when the servant says, Owner of the Day of Judgment, Allah responds by saying, Majjadani abdi, my servant has glorified me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking to you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is conversing with you. Now's the time to pour your heart out to him. Now's the time to think of him, to let those emotions of, of, of love and happiness and joy and sorrow and sadness, let them out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Talk to your maker, converse with him. You know, we have enough time to build a relationship in this dunya with a human being that is just as weak as, as us or even weaker. We have enough time to get married and be intimate with a human being such that you reach a point where you love each other and you can talk to each other and you can confide in each other and you can trust each other. But we don't have time for Allah. 
the maker who fashioned us, he who placed us on earth in the first place. We really don't have time to talk to him, to converse with him, to let out our emotions to him, to tell him that I'm really sad today, Ya Allah. I really need you, O oh Allah. You know, this has happened to me. Cry to him. He cares. Perhaps the person you cry to in this world doesn't even really care for you. But the, the being Allah, this being that is like, like no other, really cares for you. He will change your life and he has the capacity to change things for you. When Ya'qub alayhi salatu wassalam had lost a son, he didn't complain to the human beings around him. He didn't tell them that this is what I'm going through. I can't take it any longer. I've gone blind from sorrow. I complain of my sorrow and my sadness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is how his circumstance, his circumstance changed. You find that Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam is reunited with his father. Why? Because he complained to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Ayyub alayhi salatu was salam was touched with harm, he went through so much, so much of illness, so much difficulty for years on end. It is said that he lost so many of his family members as well. Then he says, Inni masani al-dur wa anta arhamur rahimeen. Harm has touched me, O Allah, and you are the most, most merciful. You are the most merciful of those who are merciful. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lifts up his problems, relieves him of his heartache, and he's returned back to normal health, sound and okay. When last did we turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? When last did we beg of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? When last did we really place our heads on the ground for our maker, Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal, the one who fashioned you, placed your nose where it is, your mouth where it is, gave you a respiratory system and a reproductive system and a circulatory system where your blood and your veins and everything works in conjunction with each other simultaneously functioning so that you never go wrong until you realize one day when something goes wrong how valuable just that one eye is or just how valuable that liver is or that kidney is you can't place your head on the ground for him you can't think about him you can't ask him why not why not are we insane you know it is the plot of shaitan to stop you from thinking of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your salah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells, of, tells us of a devil known as Khinzab or Khanzab. Khinzab's job is literally as soon as you say Allahu Akbar, Allah is the greatest, he's poking and prodding you. Hey, stop. Stop right now. Don't say that. Think about this. Think about that. You know, let's take your mind back to where you were yesterday and the day before and in the future where you will be anything besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us that when he does this, when you become distracted, then say, A'udhu billahi min shaytanir rajeem in your salah and turn to your left slightly let him spit very lightly on his side to the left three times. And when I say spit, or when the hadith says spit, it doesn't mean you literally go gather everything in your mouth and go, you know, and do it on the person next to you. He's not Satan, he's not the devil. Why are you doing it to him? You know, basically say, without any spit coming out. And if you are in jama'ah, in a gathering, then perhaps what you can do is take your handkerchief out or put it into your arm and do it there instead of, instead of actually spitting where a person feels like you're spitting on them. So 
This basically ends that whisper from the devil. You've sought refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the accursed devil. This is one of the ways in which we can actually get rid of any distractions in our salah. But I'd like to talk about something before salah that we are doing, that we are engaged in. How many of us are on our phones going through TikTok, Instagram, WhatsApp, Facebook and so much more. And we're literally going through reel after reel, looking at different things for hours on end. And then we want to quickly rush into our salah. All those images that you, that are, that you were seeing are now going through your mind. You see that man that you were looking at, oh wow, he's got abs, <laughs> amazing. Wow, she's got legs and it, so on and so forth, so forth. Excuse my language. Excuse my language. I know that it might sound a bit vulgar to the older generation, but wallahi, this is what is happening. Wallahi, this is what's happening. You know, we're going through this stuff on a day-to-day -day basis. We can spend hours on end on it. And then at the last minute, let's think of the situation. How many times has the Mu'addin said, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, or, or the very phone that you are sitting on, scrolling through, utters these words, Allah is the greatest, Allah is the greatest. The app is on your phone, you hear it. You quickly silent, put it on silent, and then you scroll through one, two more videos. And those one, two more videos are another hundred because you keep going and going and I've got two hours to pray. It's okay. Allah doesn't require me to pray right now, right here. So I'll pray, I'll pray. And then when there's five minutes left, you take one minute to make your wudu, three minutes to pray, you're done and you're back onto your phone. Why? Why couldn't you wait to be with these human beings that you're interacting with, that you're watching? Half the time you don't even know them. You don't even have a physical relationship with them. You don't, you've never met them in your life. But you can't wait to go back to them. And you can leave your maker. You can rush through your salah with your maker. Why? To what end and for what reason? And what have you achieved from that anyways in the first place? You know, I understand that human beings are curious by nature and sometimes you want to see what's going on and this person's life and that person's life. Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as long as it's not haram, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed you to do that. It's okay. But spend an hour, spend two. It's not an hour that we spend. It's not two. Go onto your phone. Go onto the app that tells you how long you spend on, on, on the first three or four or five apps. And you'll notice that it's five to six hours a day, four hours a day, three hours a day. Really, do you have to spend that long just looking at somebody else's life that is a perfect picture that they have painted for you? They don't tell you that they go to the toilet as well. They don't tell you that they need the bathroom as well. They don't tell you all the rubbish that's going on in their life and the hell that they're going through as well. They're human beings just like you. They've got problems just like you. They don't tell you all of that. But you look at it and you become depressed. I've got such a sad life. This is what social media really does to you. But we're not here to talk about social media. We're here to talk about salah. So at least 20 minutes before your salah, 15 minutes before your salah, put the phone aside, set it aside, put it on silent. Why? Because I'm going to my Mecca now. I'm going to meet him and I'd love to meet him with my mind empty. Take your time making your wudu, deliberately thinking of the sins falling off each arm and your face and your hair and your feet. Think about this. Picture it in your mind. Think of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being happy with you. And then say Allahu Akbar with a clear mind whilst you really mean it. Because... When you say it with, the, with a, a clear mind, you really mean Allah is the greatest. He is the only being that matters right now. I surrender my life to him. I've come empty handed, O oh Allah, you are the greatest. And I declare that I acknowledge it and I admit it, O oh Allah, here I am for you. 
So these are some of the ways that we can employ to enjoy our salah. You see, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had a salah full of concentration. But if we take a look at the hadith of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we'll realize that his life was very different to ours. So Ibn Abbas Rahimahullahu Ta'ala, he says that I spent the night with the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at my aunt's house, Maymuna. Maymuna, the wife of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So he says that the pillow that, that he had, I slept on one side and the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam slept on the other. Or he slept on the length of the pillow and I slept on the width of the pillow. And just before the middle part of the night, or just, just after, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wakes up. And he rubs the sleep out of his eyes, gets hold of some water, cool water that was in a uh, skin that was known as Shen. So the skin, despite the heat of the desert, would keep the water cool. He gets hold of this, opens it, has a little bit, makes wudu, and then he reads the verses. إِنَّ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَاخْتِلَافِ اللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ وَاخْتِلَافِ اللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ لَآيَاتٍ لِأُولِي الْأَلْبَابِ Indeed, in the creation of the heavens and the earth, and the changing of the night and the day are signs for those who ponder. الَّذِينَ يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهَ قِيَامًا وَقُعُودًا وَعَلَى جُنُوبِهِمْ وَيَتَفَكَّرُونَ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ Those who remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while standing, while sitting and whilst on their sides and they think and they ponder in the creation of the heavens and the earth رَبَّنَا مَا خَلَقْتَ هَذَا بَاطِلًا سُبْحَانَكَ فَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ Our Lord, you have not created this in vain. Our Lord, you have not created this in vain. So protect us from the fire. Why did Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam recite the last 10 verses of Surah Al-Imran? Because in these verses are the mention of the creation of the heavens and the earth by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The mention of people of intellect who ponder over all of this. If you ponder over the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created all of this and then you stand up, imagine where your heart is. Imagine what's in your heart at that point when you stand before your maker and you realize the magnanimity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you think of the, the heavens and the earth and the universe out there and the stars and the galaxies, and then you realize that Allah created all of this. This points to one being Allah. And then you stand before that maker of yours. That will make all the difference in the world. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam recited these verses. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he actually uh, washed his face with cold water. He made wudu with cool water. Why? Because it woke him up. He rubbed the sleep out of his eyes. You see the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam having khushur for khushur, having concentration, presence of mind and heart and soul and body for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before he really entered into his prayer. This is why the prayer of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam led him to tear and led his heart to tremble and led him to the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until he would perform salah such that his feet would swell up. You see, this is what he did before his salah. What is the build up to our salah? What have we done to prepare to meet our maker? The end of that hadith, to end of the hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam performs 12 units of prayer. And Ibn Abbas rahimahullah ta'ala, he says that once we started the prayer, the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gets hold of my ear and he massages it gently. 
He massages it gently during the prayer. Why? To draw his attention to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to tell him, now's the time. Now you've got to concentrate. Now you've got to think of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he says that then he performed 12 units of prayer and he ended off with one and that was the end of his prayer of the night. 13 raka'at of salah, 12 units of prayer, two, 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 and then he ended off with one and that was the end of the prayer of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And bear in mind that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam loved salah so much. وَجُعِلَتْ قُرَّةُ عَيْنِي فِي الصَّلَاةِ the coolness of my eyes have been placed in salah. He would actually wake up every night to perform that salah. Ya ayyuhal muzzammil qumil layla illa qalila. Oh, the one who covers, stand up at night for half the night or less. For half the night or less, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did this on a regular basis. Stood up for Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Couldn't wait until he went to his maker. Arihna biha ya Bilal. Bring peace and comfort to us with this salah, O Bilal. Make the adhan. Make the adhan. We can't wait to go to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. What is our attitude? How do we think of our salah? We are we with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, as perfect as your standing is in this world, and as perfect as you make it in this world, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will perfect your standing before Him on the day of Qiyamah. Imagine someone were to tell you, and this is from the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Salli salata muwaddi'in, perform the salah of a person who's bidding farewell. One who's leaving this world. Imagine someone were to tell you that after the salah, you climb down into your grave and you lay down there or we're going to lay you down there. And then the dust is all going to be gathered over you. And that's your last salah. You're going to meet your maker now. What kind of salah would that be? It would be a salah full of the concentration Full of presence of heart and mind and soul and body. Why? Because I'm going to meet Allah. You talk to Allah. You'd pour your heart out to Him. You'd beg Him for forgiveness. And only when you were satisfied that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was, had forgiven you or you felt that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had forgiven you, would you end that salah. You know what? One day, the prayer that you last prayed will be your last. So if you make every prayer like it's your last, then one day that will come true. One day you'll stand before your maker after your last prayer. So it's about time that we change our lives. It's about time that we think about what we're doing with our lives. I'm not saying don't take your time out to go and spend time with your family and to enjoy your life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't need you to live a miserable life. He placed you on earth to worship Him and to enjoy of the dunya. Enjoy of the dunya, live in the dunya. You're living here, He placed you here. He didn't place you in Jannah. He placed you here on earth with all of the trials and tribulations. Yes, you will be rewarded for them. But enjoy your life. At the same time, these few moments that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you. He's given you 25 hours, 24 hours in the day. 24 hours in the day. And you can't give him half an hour for your salah to be perfect. Perfect, Half an hour, literally. 45 minutes, that's all you need to take out of your day to ensure that your salah is perfect before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's hard. Yes, it is. It's difficult. Nobody's saying it's easy. Nobody's saying that you can easily just get up and do it and it will happen in your life. You have to fight yourself for it. وَاسْتَبِرْ عَلَيْهَا وَأْمُرْ أَهْلَكَ بِالصَّلَاةِ وَاسْتَبِرْ عَلَيْهَا لَا نَسْأَلُكَ رِزْقًا نَحْنُ نَرْزُقُكَ وَالْعَاقِبَةُ لِلتَّقْوَى Command your family to perform that salah. Command your family to do that salah and be patient upon it. Why do you need patience in your salah? You're just performing it. No, because you need to fight yourself. As much as your soul wants to drift and go away from Allah. No, 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 no. Come back. Here we are. We're standing before Allah. And one day you'll get that prayer right. One day you'll perform it right. 
And when you do, you won't want to leave that feeling that you get. You know, sometimes you ask yourself again and you know, you, you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again and again for something. You keep asking him and you keep asking him and the answer doesn't come. But in that process of asking him, in that process of begging him, you find sweetness in your prayers such that it becomes more sweet to you than that which you have asked for. I want a spouse, oh Allah, please grant me a spouse, grant me a spouse, oh Allah, grant me, uh, you know, wealth, oh Allah, grant me a car, ya Allah, I want a Ferrari, ya Allah, I want this, I want that, oh Allah. And you keep asking Allah, Allah doesn't give it to you. But you find sweetness and joy in that prayer such that you'd give it up just for that sweetness, to continue with that sweetness in your salah. This is really and truly the gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon you. If He's given you sweetness in your prayer, Wallahi, there's nothing that can replace that. There's literally nothing in this world that can replace that. And this is why we find that the revered brothers and sisters really come onto the deen. Why? Because they've tasted darkness. And then when that light enters their heart, Many of them find it easy. They find the deen easier than the life that they led before. They know that it's a deep, dark pit. And that's all that there is out there. So they find peace. They find happiness in their salah, in their connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They've tasted what darkness is like. And I'm not encouraging you to go out there and taste of the darkness. You know, if Allah's blessed you and you're born into a Muslim family, thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Be grateful to him. You see, so the last part of that ayah is very interesting. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لا نسألك رزقا. We don't ask you for sustenance. We don't ask you for sustenance. نحن نرزقك. We will sustain you. We will sustain you. Why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talk about this now? Because so many of us give up our salah for business. Give up our salah for a deal, give up our salah to attain a little bit of this dunya. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is literally telling you that give that up. Why? Because if you come to me, نَحْنُ نَرْزُقُكْ We will take care of you. We will provide for you. We will sustain you. Try it out. The next time, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does test people in this manner, especially when you're in business. You know, you're about to conclude a deal. And if you waited five more minutes in that meeting, you'd miss your salah. You'd miss your salah, but you'd get that deal. Try it out. Give up that business. Let it go for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's useless. It doesn't matter. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala matters more. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you way more than you ever imagined. Man taraka lillahi shay'an awadahu Allahu khayran minhu. The one who leaves something for Allah, Allah will give him much better than that. Not only in the akhirah, but in this dunya as well. You see? So... Some of the tips that we can actually use to perform our salah in the correct manner is to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before our salah. وَأَقِمِ الصَّلَاةَ لِذِكْرِي And establish the salah for my remembrance. But the only way you're really going to remember Allah in your salah is to remember Him before and out of your salah. If you remember him out of your salah and you constantly think of him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make it easy for you to think of him in your salah. The siwak, you know the toothbrush, is something that can help you in your salah. Imagine you go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with smelly breath and you're now and you're in the salah, people next to you are distracted, they're, yeah, this guy is somebody, you know, <laughs> what has he eaten before he came here? And then you're belching away and so on and so forth. And this happens in Ramadan. <laughs> we know that very well. I think we've all experienced it. You have <laughs> an uncle next to you and he's basically, oh, you know. And why do you go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this manner? Why can't you brush your teeth, take time out to belch at home, walk at home? You know, I know there's a very short period of time in the UK, so belch as much as you want at home. Do what you want, burp at home. It's okay. But don't do it in the masjid. Avoid doing it in the masjid. Or at least don't eat that which is 
<laughs> I really don't know what people eat, to be honest with you. So, that's just on the lighter side of things. <laughs> but uh, basically, clean your mouth before you go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it will help your salah because the mouth that you're using to remember Allah is now clean. The angels feel fine and okay to approach you and be around you. There's presence of mind and heart. And you're there before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Social media, we've already spoken about it. Avoid using it for 20, 15 to 20 minutes before. And time of salah is very important. So uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ الصَّلَاةَ كَانَتْ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ كِتَابًا مَوْقُوتًا Indeed, salah is prescribed upon the believers at a specific time. So if you perform that salah at the beginning part of the time, it's easier for you to render it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than when you wait and you say it's okay, there's still time. It becomes harder and harder. And many of us have actually experienced where you continue to do this until the time of salah has actually lapsed in totality and the next salah has clicked in. Why? Why couldn't you just perform it at the starting, at the first part? And you'll find that it is easier for you to pray at this time. It's easier for you to think of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, focus on Him. Ponder over the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ponder over the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during your prayer. Those of us who don't understand Arabic, go through certain verses every day or every week. And decide that this week I'm going to pray these verses in my salah until you've got a database of verses that you understand and can ponder over during your salah. It will make it easy for you to ponder over these verses. And eventually you won't have to look through them because now it's in my mind. It's there. I don't need to look through them and I keep going through different verses. So you don't become tired. Normally and naturally human beings, you become tired of something that's repetitive. You keep doing it, you keep doing it, you keep doing it, you keep, become tired. Inna a'tayna kal in surah al-ikhlas. That's our go-to surahs. Why? They're the easiest to perform. They're the easiest to say. But take your time to look through other verses. Look through ayatul kursi. What does it mean Allah's describing himself? And this is why I like going through verses that actually describe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, al-falaq, al-nas. Why? Because you're actually standing before that maker. It's, isn't it good to actually think of him with his qualities and his names? Think of what he actually looks like. Imagine that before your eyes. There's nothing wrong with this. Just don't describe it to the next man because whatever you think of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is different to that. But you're allowed to think of him. You're allowed to imagine him. In his physical being. Because he says, O oh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, oh, Worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as though you see him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us sincerity and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us khushu' in our salah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make the salah that we perform a means of our entry into Jannah and a light for us on the day of Qiyamah as well as in our graves. Ameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.